It's Connor. We got the twins. Connor for real. Today. Yeah, we do. And by the way, we're not brothers. We we're could not. be. We get so many comments on videos. Yeah. <laughs> we're not brothers, but that's okay. I'm not offended. I'm actually humbled by someone uh, assuming that. So. I'm honored. Yeah. Um, well, today, uh, Robbie's out. He's actually playing a tournament. So um, instead of just skipping a week, we thought, hey, let's do this a little differently. We'll go to the grip lock set. Yeah. Connor will come on. And uh, we're going to do it in, in the bag. And I think a lot of people have asked, and here it is for you. We're going to do Connor's bag today. Get ready. Uh, yeah. It's, <laughs> he th okay. He has like kind of the brand of it being a mess, but I mean, I'm looking at it here on the graph. It's really not that much of a mess. It makes sense. And some there's some overlap that you'll see on the screen when Silas throws it up, but... I mean, for the most part, you have discs that overlap, but they all do different things. I've mm -hmm. seen some of them do different things. Yeah. So um, we're just going to kind of jump in, talk about it like we would a normal guest. Um, and then uh, I actually, believe it or not, have a couple recommendations, I think, that you awesome. might like to like to try out. So um, let's go ahead and jump in, Connor, and uh, look through your bag. All right, sick. So... Um, well, let's just, just to preface this, yeah. just so you know, yeah. my bag, um, I was more competitive whenever I was in college. Mm -hmm. So I cared about having the perfect layering. Now it's just like disc golf is a hobby for me and I do it because it's really fun for me mm -hmm. to have all these Frisbees. Yeah. So like I just, if I see something cool on the shelf or something that I think looks like a lot of fun, like mm -hmm. I'm going to try to throw it. So that's what my bag now is very much like a hobbyist bag. Yeah. And I think, you know, it's really fun when we play our weeklies and stuff to watch you throw some of these random discs, especially like, mm -hmm. you know, I'm thinking of one particular destroyer that I brought in and put in the U section. Oh, yeah. That, that you throw. The, that's the best disc in my bag now. Yeah. And it doesn't fly anything like a destroyer <laughs> should. So really funny, but it's fun for all of this too you know i was looking through the u section yesterday i think uh -huh. and i was like this looks like a connor disc and it was like a destroyed destroyer mm -hmm. so you know i think that's that's a lot of fun you know i'm still trying to learn to play disc golf basically so i <laughs> i, I want to get to this point because i'm like this looks so fun to pull these random discs out and just uh -huh. give them a try and, yeah and see what's going on so um so let's start at the bottom here uh looks like uh, you got some wizards you have three of yep. them i'm assuming obviously putters and then you mm -hmm. have a throwing one so yeah i think everybody likes to know what do you like the most like why why wizards why did you choose wizards of all the putting putters you could put choose I chose the wizard ironically at first okay. because Hunter said during an episode of Grip Locked um, that if he could see me being with any, like if, if my person, I reminded him of any company, it would be gateway. And I was immediately my, like immediately my feelings were hurt. And I was like, what the heck? And he was like, no, because I think that you can make gateway hipster and like kind of bring it back and make it cool. Mm -hmm. And then I immediately took that as a challenge. And I was like, you know what? Yes, I'm the gateway guy now. And so I immediately started putting with wizards mm -hmm. and they're fine. I don't, I don't really have any problems with them. They just, eventually I got comfortable with them and now I have like 60 of them and I can't can't put with anything else because I have too many of them. Yeah. And you, you've got Nolan on the wizard gang now. He's, I did. Yeah. He's getting nasty with those things. Mm -hmm. And then obviously you have a throwing wizard. I think there's, I mean, that's like my, like, um, if I'm like jump putting, mm -hmm. uh, or like doing an approach shot, that's the wizard I'll use. Okay, cool. Um, and then uh, like rounding out the putter slot here, looks like we have an envy and a shaman. I, mm -hmm. I mean, I've seen you throw the shaman a lot. So, yes. so I'm guessing shaman covers that like neutral to like understable slot. And then your mm -hmm. envy is going to take care of everything else. The shaman is the envy went in my bag last week. I've only okay. played one round with it and that was our weekly. And uh, the shaman is my favorite throwing putter I've ever thrown. It is probably the disc I'm throwing on like 60% of the holes on any short course. Um, and it's basically just like point and shoot. It'll go dead straight, but it does not have a lick of fade to it. Mm -hmm. So these past few, like this, these past few months, I feel the most confident with the shaman. I know I'm going to hit a line with the shaman, mm -hmm. but I can't throw flex lines with it because oh, okay. I know it's not going to fade back. So right. that's why the envy went in my bag last week mm -hmm. and I played a weekly with it. And whenever I needed that, same line I would throw the shaman on, but for mm -hmm. it to fade, the envy was perfect for it. Okay. And I got mm -hmm. you. And then, uh, it looks like, and I, again, like the Toro, the zone, the razor claw three, I personally put those kind of in like the, yeah, they're all the same thing. approach category. The so, Toro's sick. It's, it's just, I, I like it better than the zone and it's in sexton plastic, which is awesome. So yeah, you know, I really like the feel of those. I mean, I felt them at the warehouse and stuff, but just haven't made it in again. It's kind of the thing like the razor claw is like my backhand, like slot for that. And then my zones of forehand. I just don't yeah, like to they're throw all, either. Yeah. They're all the same. Yeah. Well, <laughs> okay. Yeah. There, there's some hate coming from that, but, um, no, good. I, I think you have that spot covered, obviously. Then we kind of go to the mid-range category. I mean, mm -hmm. you obviously love the rock. That's pretty clear if you look yep. at this, this mm -hmm. graph. So um, This is the least amount of rocks I've ever had in my bag. Oh, okay. Well, that's yeah. interesting. I went, In college, I had six. 
Okay. All right. Well, <laughs> and again, these all kind of look like a little overlap lap. I know that they all do something different. Tell us a little bit about like your rocks and what you use them for. There's one really beat up DX one. That's like my turnover mid range. Mm-hmm. The other two rocks are exact fly exactly the same. Okay. And <laughs> so what, um, what, I guess the shot difference from a shaman and maybe your beat up rock, uh-huh. like what, what's the difference in the shot type or so, shot selection in those? Honestly, two? I've kind of been, this is actually where I'd be willing to talk on this show. Oh, okay. I'm, a, I'm in love with the rock. I'm always, I've been a rock thrower since I first got into disc golf mm-hmm. six or seven years ago. Yeah. Um, it was like the first mid range I threw mm-hmm. and, uh, but I have been intrigued by more mid ranges lately. Okay. Not the buzz. I went down the buzz road. Didn't like it. It yeah. ruined my mid range game. <laughs> um, but, uh, I, I like, I love the rock, but I am willing to try other things because right now I'm not throwing them cause I don't feel confident, confident with them. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know what it is, but lately I just haven't been getting a clean release. I think it's because like, I've just been throwing my putter so much more. Mm-hmm. So like my shaman is so comfortable in my hand. And then whenever I move from like my hybrid grip with the shaman to now throwing a similar power shot, but mm-hmm. with power grip, I yeah. just like, I'm not feeling super confident in it. Okay. All right. So right now, and I'm throwing my shaman mainly where I typically would be throwing a rock, a flippy mm-hmm. rock. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. Cause there's definitely two gaps. I kind of see that I want to talk about once we go through your whole bag, mm-hmm. I think there's definitely a couple discs that maybe make sense there for you to try. Yeah. Um, so, all right. So we have the buzz. We kind of talked about the buzz. Um, it's we, a photon buzz. I have yeah. it in there cause it looks sick and it feels really good. So we'll see if that kind of stays in my bag. Yeah. I threw it yesterday from, for my arm. It's like, you know, it's pretty easy to like get to turn if you want it to, but it does come back, which, mm-hmm. you know, that's a slot I'm really wanting. You know, I have like the mind bender in there right now that kind of does that, but it's a little bit more flippy for yeah. me than the buzz, buzz. throwers will like that buzz, mm-hmm. but that buzz also feels good to people who don't typically like the buzz. Cause I'm not typically a buzz person, but yeah. it feels really good to me. Yeah. To me that that plastic is very different and Mm -hmm. one I'm not used to throwing. So, um, I put it, I've had the bus out of my bag for like six or seven months probably now. And like, I actually put that one back in after doing some field work with it. Cause I was Mm -hmm. like, I love it. I can throw it very far. Yeah. I don't have to worry about it turning over on me, but I can throw not a flex line, but like a mini version of a flex line Mm -hmm. with it. So, um, so now we're kind of up to like the fairway driver slot here. It looks like leopard FD cookie and T bird. Um, Um, I think we're all pretty familiar with a leopard. So that's going to be like your understable mm -hmm. slot. That's like a, that disc is honestly in my bag because I think it's really cool. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of these discs are, for example, the reason why I have that one of those rocks in there that does the exact same thing as the other rock is mm-hmm. because it's an air force stamp rock. Mm. And so I think it's cool. Mm-hmm. That leopard is a pro leopard, but it's pre flight number pro leopard. So I think it's pretty cool, but it's, it's pretty flippy. It's a little bit flippier than my FD, but I would be, I'm willing to admit that it's too much like my FD to be in there. I got you. Okay. Yeah. And then your FD is an original FD, correct? It's, uh-huh. Yeah. Um, yeah. Really nice turnover FD. disc. Okay. So yeah, it's very different from the, the new. C-line yeah. Very, FD. very different. Okay. Just prefacing that because I think I learned that very quickly. I heard, I've heard you guys talk about old FDs yeah. and then I grabbed the C-line one and it was actually pretty stable, which mm-hmm. s- surprised me. Mm-hmm. So, um, and then it looks like we have a little up, uh, uh, cookie and T-bird overlap. I'm sure maybe your T-bird flies a little different than a typical T-bird. Or no, that, that T-bird actually i mean that's a really stable t-bird that's in there mm-hmm. um so it's I, I don't need it in there right now because i just put the cookie in my bag last week because mm-hmm. i had a t-bird in there for i need to feel like i feel like i needed that over stable fairway slot mm-hmm. not quite a firebird but you right. know not not an fd either mm-hmm. and so i put the t-bird in there because i kept on saying i want something like a t-bird mm-hmm. and then uh i tested nolan was working the store and i was like all right nolan i need something that's like a t-bird and then he was like why don't you just put a t-bird in your bag And I was like, okay, (laughs) so I did, um, and it worked well, but like, it's just not, it's just not fun to me. I wanted something more fun. So Mm -hmm. I put the cookie in last week and it's probably going to take the place of that T-bird. Okay. Yeah. And I think that's fine. I mean, I know for me too, when I'm trying to like narrow down some molds, it's like, it's very obviously okay to figure out which one you like, have both of them in. Yeah. Something Robbie Mm -hmm. always says, it's like, Hey, play around. And like, if you have that shot, just alternate between the two to just figure out which one you like. That's what I'm kind of waiting for with those discs. Mm -hmm. Um, cause I really like the feel of the cookie and I think it's supposed to fly similar to the Mm T-Bird. Um, but I also just like throwing weirder discs and not as many people know about the cookie. Yeah. And I think that's great. Um, and I, I think one, 
like one gap if anyone's looking uh visually to this podcast is there's definitely like a very overstable gap from like the four speed up to nine speed there's like this very if again for someone like me that mm-hmm. can't throw like something super overstable mm-hmm. i'm not going to have something over there but for someone like you that has a faster arm there's definitely like an ultra like overstable category there but if you need that type of shot are you just jumping up to like the splice that's where my the splice firebird or ginger is and mm-hmm. this uh the chart is not my ginger I think is more overstable than a regular ginger because it's really flat mm-hmm. so I my ginger flies exactly like a firebird okay um, exactly like my, like my fiber at least yeah so it's more of like probably a hand feel thing for you if you need something like ultra overstable you're just gonna kind of yeah. jump up to that nine speed area mm-hmm. to cover because I've seen you you know we were playing but that's why I put the t-bird it felt like I needed the t-bird was for that slot it, exactly because that's probably going to be a little bit over there I yeah. got you yeah and I think you know I watched you play and you know if you like get off the fairway you need to like a an ultra flex line mm-hmm. to get up somewhere i saw you grab the splice a few times I, I really like the splice the splice is literally in my bag for one reason and that is whenever i need to throw a really intense forehand flex shot yeah so if i need to throw something on a really hard anheuser angle and have it flex back mm-hmm. and not cut into the ground and roll further yeah. into the woods no so. absolutely and i use that a lot because i end up in the woods a lot okay <laughs> yeah well hey i'm there too so and i think that's that's important you know where like that, you know, six speed, super overstable doesn't mm-hmm. make a lot of sense for you because you're going to be comfortable with going up yeah. to that. And yeah. I think it just varies by player. I don't think that's right or wrong to have that gap as long as you have something and really your Toro, I'm sure I've seen mm-hmm. you throw it pretty far as well. So I think you can kind of bump it up to like cover that gap too. Yeah. So I think that makes a lot of sense. I, uh, a lot of times like to throw a straighter disc just on more hyzer yeah. to get more glide for those kind of yeah. shots. So that's the, a lot of my bag. You'll see there's some overstable stuff in there, but I mm-hmm. probably have way too much understable stuff. Cause I like throwing flippy stuff. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Um, so that brings us up to like the distance driver category here. Mm-hmm. So, um, really like as far as like the slower speed of the distance drivers, you have a beast. Yeah. Um, so tell me about that beast. Is that like a flippy beat up beast? So that or? beast. Yeah. It's super flea, uh, super beat up. It's also a pre-flight number, but mm-hmm. it's the champion plastic. There's a really, cool kind of pearly champion plastic Mm -hmm. um i actually got it in the trash panda disc swap last year oh nice and it it immediately went in my bag and became one of my favorite flying discs Mm -hmm. it flies honestly a lot like my fd just a lot further okay um it's got like a if i throw it on hyzer it's gonna flip up to flat if i throw it flat it's gonna turn over Mm -hmm. and pretty much hold it and maybe fade to the end but yeah so it, it flies just like that flippy fd but faster it's faster and a little further makes sense uh and then no surprise here. We've got some race and we got a bunch of destroyers. Mm-hmm. So, um, I, I know these fly differently, obviously, but, <laughs> um, I've seen a lot of people, obviously when they get to this 11, 12 speed category, if they're in of a people like that's where the throwing race and mm-hmm. destroyers, um, tell me, obviously your race, tell me about the difference between those two first. Okay. So the wraiths I have, um, the red one is, Pretty beat up, Mm -hmm. but it's super domey. A really, really domey wraith. Mm -hmm. And pretty much the really, really domey wraiths will almost never get flippy. Um, I mean, like give or take it. uh, At some point, I'm sure they will. But like um, I've had really flat wraiths that are beat up like crazy and they get really nice and flippy. But Mm -hmm. this one I actually got out of the use section and um, it's like old looking, but doesn't have a ton of nicks in it. And it's again, it's got that super crazy pop top on Mm -hmm. it. So what I like that for is since it's not really beefy because it's not brand new, Mm -hmm. but it's also not flat. So it's not going to stay turned over. I like to throw that for um, really glidey S line shots because some of my destroyers, I don't want to throw a super stable one because I'm scared it's going to uh, like just Those fall are, out of the yeah. sky and mm-hmm. not glide to the left. But um, I don't want to throw a flippy one because I'm scared it won't come back. Gotcha. So this one is one I know I can put on Anheuser and it's just going to glide to the right, but always come back left. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's what that disc is for. And then I've got a another pre-flight number Wraith um, is the other Wraith. And mm-hmm. it's like beat to crap. So flippy, like ridiculously flippy. Um, so that's like if I just need that, like um, that that speed of driver that is just gonna it's gonna absolutely mm-hmm. flip to the ground every time. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. So and then um, are you throwing those on forehand? Also, Both just back in, just back in. Okay. Yeah. Do you have a disc that you're throwing on forehand? <laughs> I've got three forehand discs, okay. and that is the Toro, 
the splice and the spirit. Okay. So you, you want something very overstable for your, yes. your forehead. I know that that is, that is not what Robbie would tell you to do, mm-hmm. but I'm at a point in my life where I'm no longer really like, I'm not really trying to get better at disc golf. I'm just trying to shoot better gotcha. at disc golf. Mm-hmm. And so I had a realization the other day where like every time I try to throw flat, the disc slips out of my hand. And also whenever I throw flat, I have probably only 55% of the power than I do on hyzer. Okay. Cause on hyzer on, uh, on, if I throw a shot hyzer and have it flip over, I pretty consistently have 400 feet power. Mm-hmm. If I try to throw a disc flat, it's going like 340. Okay. And so it's just, so I just decided, well, why try to get better at flat shots whenever I can just choose to be a hyzer player and just only throw hyzers. And yeah. so, well, I think it's, it's both. I mean, you can always try to be better if you want to, if not just play to your strengths exactly. and, and cover and your weaknesses with where I am now with really playing a real round of disc golf once a week, I would rather just have more fun playing that yeah. instead of being like, ah, oh, I worked on that this week and it sucks. Yeah. And so, yeah. And I def- I mean, your spirit, I definitely see, have seen you throw that multiple times on forehand and that I is magic yeah it's it's very reliable for him and it makes complete sense why that's in there in that slot and that one's crazy warped so it's actually way less stable mm-hmm. than a regular spirit is like a fast tilt mm-hmm. um this spirit actually is really straight for my mm-hmm. forehand and then has a good fade so i can get turn out of it but it's just a magic disc it just for some reason it links directly to my brain as soon as i touch yeah. it and it goes exactly where i want it to Inter- yeah, I, I, <laughs> I don't can, know. I, it's weird. I, can I couldn't that. throw. I couldn't throw forehands, mm-hmm. and then I threw that disc on forehand, and now my forehand's pretty pretty usable. Yeah, I would definitely agree with that. Um, okay, so let's talk about the last cluster you kind of have here, which you have three destroyers and a warbird. Uh-huh. Um, I know, obviously, I think with any destroyer throw, you have a bunch of different mm-hmm. shots you're throwing with those. So tell me about that. So my first one is my favorite destroyer, and it is the, a destroyer with interstate battery stamp on it that Brad actually mm-hmm. brought into the use section and I saw it and I was like this is the coolest disc I've ever seen and it's a pretty lightweight one Mm -hmm. Uh, I think it's probably it's probably in uh, somewhere in the 160s um, like mid 160s. Mm-hmm. I'm not really sure. It might be 167. But we I think have a it's scale now. That. We can just weigh that. I think it's light. It's, it's yeah. like it's pretty light. It's pretty lightweight. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's really flippy because it's really beat up as well. And so that thing is like. But since it's so flippy, I know what it's going to do every time. And that's just like, I'm going to throw this on a ton of hyzer, Mm -hmm. way high left, and it's going to flip all the way over and then fade back a little bit at the end. It's just just like a magic disc to me. I just know exactly what it's going to do. Is that your farthest flying disc, you think? Probably. I've seen you throw it very, very far. I think it is. Did I ever tell you where I found that? No. Okay. I found, I was out on a course, um, in at Watoga state park in West Virginia. Shout out to anybody that knows where that is because <laughs> I don't think anybody does <laughs> anyway. Um, there's a tiny disc golf course there, like kind of unmarked, like they mm-hmm. marked the tee pads with like red spray painted. Okay. Rocks. Yeah. Like, yeah. So fun. Right. Um, I was looking for one of my desks and under a downed like giant pine tree, I see this like interstate battery <laughs> logo. So I pull it out. I try to call the guy, um, didn't get it. Text him. He finally texted me back and said, Hey, keep it. Don't worry about it. So I, I kept it cause I'm like, Oh, I've heard of destroyers. I want to throw destroyers. And uh-huh. I just never threw it. So that's I why think I genuinely it out of every disc in my bag, that one would be the hardest for me to lose. Yeah. That's the one I would stay in the dark, in the rain, looking for still if I lost it. Mm-hmm. Um, but then up from that, I've got ba- basically a touch up in stability. Um, it's, it's actually a leap in stability because mm-hmm. I don't quite have anything crazy between those, but that's because that one's really flippy. I've got another destroyer that probably for Hunter and Trevor is probably pretty flippy. But for me, it's like a, it's like a hyzer to flat, like hyzer flip to flat mm-hmm. and then just stay straight and then have some fade. So it's like a really, really straight destroyer. Um, it's, it's beat up. That's the only disc in my bag now that I bought brand new, probably in 2019, 2018, probably. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, and it, uh, I've beat it up ever since then. So now it's pretty beat up, Mm -hmm. but, um, yeah, it's pretty straight. Then I've got another one in there that is actually from, uh, Josh from overthrow bringing in all of his Innova in here. Yeah. Uh, he brought in a, sh- a destroyer that felt really, really good. So I took that and it's just a little bit more stable than that one. Mm-hmm. Um, a little bit more true to destroyers, but I don't have a crazy stable destroyer in my bag, mm-hmm. like a brand new destroyer in my bag. Uh, just because I really do like whenever I need a disc to go left, I'm just going to throw it on more hyzer. I just feel more comfortable with that. Mm-hmm. Um, but then I do have the Warbird. 
which the Warbird honestly is so similar to a destroyer. It flies like a really overstable destroyer. Um, and I just thought that stamp was like kind of ugly in all the right ways. Uh, it, was the, it was the Chandler Fry one where they like they did like a mixture of like Friends and like Seinfeld and like mm-hmm. it's like it's like a hor- horrendously ugly stamp, but like I really like it yeah. because it's so ugly. So I I just thought that was a weird disc. So I put it in my bag. Yeah, Connor has a reputation around here of loving like the ugly. I color, love ugly, ugly discs. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. every when any like whenever I first started working here and I had to take pictures of discs, it was like <laughs> I had to get Hunter and Trevor to choose the disc for me because I would go out there mm-hmm. and take pictures of like brown, like puke yellow and green because yeah. those are all the ones I thought were really cool. But like right. we'd post them on Instagram and it'd be like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of like that. Like I love like clean, just like matte black stamps. I don't yeah. love a lot of like mm-hmm. hollows or anything. So I have to kind of do the same thing and like mm-hmm. force myself to like go outside of that comfort zone. Yeah. Okay. So I think really, I mean, again, for having the reputation of having this, like this crazy messed up <laughs> bag, I think it makes a lot of sense. I don't, I don't see a lot of gaps, but I guess for this part of the, like the podcast, I do want to make a couple recommendations. Maybe you've thrown them. Maybe you haven't. Yeah. Great. Um, I love recommendations. So I'm going to make three for you. Okay. Um, one of them just kind of like, Hey, while you're trying out this, try out this as mm-hmm. well. Um, so first one is going to be, um, have you thrown a crave? I have not thrown a crave. No. Okay. So I think it's like, I think it's a six and a half speed. If I'm wrong, I'm sorry, everybody. <laughs> but I think it's like that nice, like you're touching the edge of the fairway drivers, but it's still kind of a mid. It still kind okay. of flies again, me throwing it. Still, I flies really like love a mid. slower fairway drivers like that. Yeah. So I think it's going to fit right in that, like, um, right between the rock and the buzz, to be honest with you. And okay. with you not like loving a buzz, mm-hmm. it might even kick the buzz out. I don't okay. know. Cause again, and then when you need like more of a flippy option, you're going to go up to your leopard anyway. Mm-hmm. So I think maybe a crave, if you try that out would be like a nice little addition okay. uh, in that, uh, especially with you trying to throw more mids and like slower fairways that kind of fits right in that. Yeah. The hole that we see right there in that five, six speed kind of category. Um, I've always thought the crave felt really good, but yeah. I just never tried one. Yeah. So my youngest, uh, Eli has one and I went out, I was doing some, just, I very rarely do field work outside of this podcast, but uh-huh. I did one just for fun and threw a couple of new discs I haven't thrown. In, and I was like, man, this crave feels so good. <laughs> it does feel really good. So I think, uh, and I think his was in fission. So I think maybe a crave and fission might even actually let it be like a little more flippy for you. Yeah. That'd be so cool. I, I think that'd be great. Um, Second recommendation is while you're trying out the cookie and the T bird. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, I mean, I think this is more like tight, kind of like tied to like a firebird disc actually now that I think about it but okay for you it might not be I don't know um if you throw in the lone star I'm sorry the mint phoenix that might be no, a I fun have not. one uh, again that's probably more like a splice firebird that does feel good to me though so yeah. that may be even I don't know maybe it covers both slots for you're mm-hmm. like hey this is overstable enough and it kind of I think it feels kind of firebird-esque so yeah that might be like a gap right there that you can uh, throw that in. Um, final one, the one I was like, Hey, I know what disc I'm going to recommend for you today. Um, have you thrown the diamond back by no, me? I haven't, okay. but that also feels really good. Yeah. I think it's like a, I think, I believe it's a nine. Speed. I'm very disappointed. I don't have any streamlined made plastic in my bag yeah. because I love all their plastic. Yeah. They're relatively, I mean, for me, they're pretty straight with a little finish for you. I'm sure they'll be very straight. Okay. Um, it, I just really see that gap like above your FD and like your beasts are actually pretty flippy. So you really don't mm-hmm. have anything kind of like very neutral that if you're like, Hey, I can't, I don't, can't worry about this angle that I'm trying yeah. to throw it on if I just need to throw this flat. Yeah, that and, makes sense. And it goes pretty far for me. So I'm sure it'll go very far cool. for you. Um, that might be a nice addition. Anything in that very straight category from like really eight speed up, I think would be a nice addition to your bag. I think it's great to have flippy things. And again, you're way more skilled than me. So that using your angles is probably not that big of a deal. Mm -hmm. But for someone like me that, you know, I'm, working flippy stuff now it's i'm trying to add some just very straight options into my bag as well so Mm -hmm. the diamondback might again it may be more of like a utility thing where hey if i really need to throw something just straight yeah hard and flat then that's what i'm going to go to no i definitely love those look sick too so yeah and they're kind of weird so i love that yeah exactly (laughs) um yeah they have some sick uh uh, a new a new stamp coming out on the apex plastic which looks even better which is kind of like a cosmic neutron yeah i think or Yes. Cosmic neutron. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I had a, I, my brain shut off for a second. So that's what I'd recommend. Hey, if you're trying new stuff and trying different things, that might be a great thing to give a try, especially the crave and the diamond. There's some discs that I want to try, mm-hmm. um, that I 
one of them, I've just seen everybody, everybody in every walk of life in disc golf that throws an uplink makes that that disc look like a sick disc. Yeah. I've seen you and Jason throw it and it looks like magic. I've seen Hunter throw it and it looks like magic. I've just seen like everybody with any every kind of disc golf form throws an uplink and it looks amazing. Yeah. So I feel like I'm missing out. So I feel like I need to try an uplink. Yeah. I'm I, I might even be willing to I'm not quite ready to get my flippy rock out, but it might take the place of that pr- that purple rock that mm-hmm. just is same as the other rock. I'll mm-hmm. probably kick that one out because I don't have any emotional ties to it. Um, so I'd be willing to d- try an uplink. Yeah, I have a um, very ugly one. I'm willing to let you try. I out. love ugly ones, yeah. so that's perfect. It's like mocha dirt brown. That's great. That's you could not have said a better color, yeah. um, except for mustard yellow. Yeah. Um, and then I also really want to try a hex. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I've also seen. The hex kind of seems like a buzz-ish flying disc, but it feels better to me. Mm-hmm. Um, and I also know they go really far, but I just like they feel really, really comfortable in my yeah. hand, especially the fission ones. I think yeah. feel really good because yeah. they kind of have that flight plate that reminds me more of a baseline plastic, yeah. which I like throwing right. baseline mids. Mm-hmm. But then the rim of a premium plastic. So I think a fission hex. I'm gonna I'm gonna put my back because yeah. I really want to try that. And. See, for me, I was going to put a fission hex in, mm-hmm. um, but then I ended up putting a mind bender in for the same oh, slot. Oh, yeah. The mind bender is also very cool. So it's very straight for me that mm-hmm. I can kind of manipulate if I need to. So awesome, man. Well, I think that was like, again, I'm pretty impressed with your bag. I, I really <laughs> applaud you for having just, I mean, not random. It's not <laughs> random, but like if you like saw the disc, they're all like very unique and cool. Yeah, they I love, I love throwing just like discs that aren't crazy popular. Yeah. Um, just because they're so much fun and they, they give you so much to talk about on the course. Yeah. Like my favorite thing is to play disc golf and then like talk about the disc you're throwing to all the guys you're mm-hmm. playing disc golf with. Yeah. And, but also you can see there's like stacks of discs on my desk over there mm-hmm. because like over the next few weeks, they'll all be trading in and out yeah. just for me to try different yeah. stuff. I just like, I like to try stuff out a lot. So we, a we, lot of those slots wouldn't change, mm-hmm. but there's some disc in there that will be switched in and out. Yeah. We actually, we had a guy, uh, a guest come on. I think it was maybe episode f- either four or seven. I mm-hmm. don't remember, but something he really did that I love that it's very intriguing to me. Cause I mean, I grew up playing like, uh, like trading card games and uh-huh. like Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh and magic and all mm-hmm. that stuff. And something that intrigues me, he has like, there's like three or four local courses he plays all the time mm-hmm. and he has a bag built specifically for each course. So he's oh, like, Oh, no I'm, way. I'm playing this course. I'm going to grab this bag. That's today. funny. So I, That's that, a, I mean, that works. Yeah. That intrigues me. But I, I mean, I think it'd be cool. Like, okay, this is my, like, Hey, this is a heavily wooded course. I'm mm-hmm. going to have this bag. Hey, this is like a more wide open, like a bombing course. I'm going to yeah. play that. So I'm just too emotionally attached to all my discs to where like, if I went to a course, and didn't have one of those discs, I would just mm. feel sad the whole time. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's a problem. I'm not. A, I'm not really attached to any of my discs anymore, except like the Vulture. It maybe? takes me about two seconds to get attached to any mm. disc. Okay. It could be the worst feeling disc in the world, but if we're on our way to a course to film and I'm in Hunter's truck and he's like, "Yeah, that disc sucks," I could hold it for two seconds and be like. This is my new favorite disc. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I will. I will say. I. I thought I lost my Eclipse MV the other day, and I was very. I was a little panicked. So <laughs> maybe I'm more attached than I think. So, um, hey, this. Uh, this is great. I appreciate you coming on. What, yeah, absolutely. What we, what we typically do to wrap up the podcast is mm-hmm. Robbie and I will do like a little. Hey, what's new in the warehouse? I'm okay. Gonna, I'm gonna put you on the spot a little bit, but what's your new favorite stuff that you've Ooh, seen in the warehouse? Okay. Hmm. Cause I know we've, we've restocked some trilogy this week, which is great. So there's like a new, uh, Oh, that new is, is it, what do they call the, is the pure that looks like it's Raptor eye? Is it Raptor eye? What's it called? No, that's just their new zero medium. That it they j- put but it looks like yeah. their Raptor eye. Yeah. Like it's stuff. almost like an orbit. Yeah. Kind of yeah. Plastic. That looks very cool. Um, and I've always like respected the pure, the pure is another disc that everyone I see throw it. It looks really sick. Mm-hmm. Um, all of the mint stuff. Mm-hmm feels really good yeah and like the diamondbacks new uh newish the phoenix mm-hmm. is newish the grackle is one that i'm really loving lately i don't yeah. know if you've thrown that i, don't, I, don't I haven't know. thrown it but i've i've seen you throw it and it feels really really good to me yeah the sublime plastic is great my mm-hmm. bobcat's in sublime, sublime my grackle is in sublime every sublime, single time so. i feel a mint disc i i want 
I like want to put it straight into my bag yeah. because they just all feel really, really good. Yeah. All in speaking of like your, um, like the cookie and the ginger, there's mm-hmm. definitely, um, we have clash still on the shelf, oh, which is yeah. kind of amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, the honey by clash where I think now it's called the wild honey. Sold out, man. It's oh, that's an incredible disc. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Those go very quickly. Um, the gingers usually do. We do have a few of those left, which is kind of crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the mint. The ginger is really good. The ginger, like, I don't know how all of them fly. I only know how the one that I have flies. It's yeah. kind of, um, it, it, it's kind of like a PD to me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Um, another thing too, that we haven't had in a while, which is kind of nice. We're kind of building up our plastic variety with Discraft. So mm-hmm. like if you look at like the Thrasher right now, we have like Z Thrasher, we have ESP Thrasher, we have a Tor Thrasher, mm-hmm. same thing with like Undertaker. We have even TI Undertakers. Um, so we're getting like some more like various types of plastics in. So if you're fans of those type of discs, please check those out as well. Even zones. I mean, we have Discraft is also like kind of a unique company in the sense of like they they very like uh, like it's very public that like each of their discs in the different plastics flies different. Yeah. On right. purpose. Like they yeah. all do that. And it's pretty consistent with how that how that works. Yeah. So. Before I like had a mixed bag, I was when I was throwing all Discraft, I really utilized that like different plastic types to try to get different mm-hmm. flights out of yeah. discs that I really like. So yeah, check that out. I mean, we still have uh, Glories from uh, Trilogy. Yeah. Like, those feel good too. This, this feel really good. I think we even have a few Raptor Eye Slammer Sneaky on the site. Mm. So uh, those are the Ricky Wysocki commemorative yeah. ones. So make sure you check those out. Uh, we have a lot of stuff coming out next week. Um, so be on the look for like the Night Prowl 2 is next week. Oh. Um, we do have um, the P2 Flex 1 is coming out next week. So Oh, I'll, uh, the Glow Sensei. Oh, yeah. That's in stock. Very cool stamp. Feels absolutely incredible. I have one and I threw it for like one round and well i grip locked into a bunch of trees so it, it might go back in my bag yeah it's not the disc fault <laughs> no no well and the the sensei has some sneaky stability so if you're wanting kind of yeah. like a throwing putter with a little bit of stability mm-hmm. like that is a really good option that's what i originally was putting in in place of that mm-hmm. or like before that envy yeah. but then i just decided to put the envy in but oh and one thing too if you go to foundation obviously this is where all these can uh, be found you know that if you're a listener if not welcome and that's where you can find these discs mm-hmm. um we just added a new um search by flight number tool to the website. Oh, sick. Um, so you can actually just go to our homepage. If you scroll down just a little bit there, you can actually kind Whoa, of that's like so cool. set a range. Uh, Connor's probably seen this for the I've first never, time. I didn't have not heard about this. So if we're, if we're looking Connor right now for a disc between seven, 11 speed for you and like this, type of turn or fade so it like will pop mm-hmm. up everything we have on our site in stock right now that ha- is between those parameters that you set um you can even look at them in like a line view or you can look at all of the discs we have in those that flight number That's range cool. so if you're like trying to figure out if you're looking at stuff or listening to stuff that we're saying you are like hey i need something maybe like that maybe a little less understable a little mm-hmm. more stable uh oh I'm, I'm really missing some seven speeds you can go to foundationdisc.com check out the search by flight number tool and then that will help you immensely like browse all the discs that we have on the site so make sure you check that out um again thank you all for listening every week very humble thank you for doing that um thank you connor for being yeah, on today no being problem. an awesome co-host uh good luck to robbie this tournament and we'll uh, come back next week also robbie if you listen to this i am very sad that i didn't get to hang out with you no. virtually but it's okay and i love you yeah and he's he said that to me yesterday and feeling is mutual okay as well he all was right, bummed cool. that he couldn't make it so hey um as long as he's sad i'm, yeah, I'm good i mean he's very he's a sad boy <laughs> so all right well um hey we'll get to say the the sign off here connor well well, if it's weird and it's good, keep it in the bag. All right, we'll see you if guys next If it's weird, week. keep it in the bag. <laughs> that, that's very true. All right, we'll see you all next week.